Hello everyone, I'm Duke Skylover. Welcome to Space Engineers. Ever since the Apex Survival update came out a few months ago, I've been working on this script called Farmhand, which is a script that you can run in a programmable block inside Space Engineers, and it helps you manage your farm. It basically checks the status of various different blocks and lets you know how they're doing and can alert you to problems in various different ways. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can set up Farmhand and some of the major features that it has. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a programmable block. I have created this nice little farm here, and I'm just I'm going to put this thing in the corner right there. Uh, activate your programmable block. I've already set up a couple of things for us to manage here. Click Edit. Make sure you have scripts turned on in the game settings for your world. Uh, if you're not sure how to use programmable block scripts, there's a great video by uh, Rev Plays Games. I'll link to it. Uh, for you to go check it out. So you're going to browse scripts, find farmhand, make sure you're subscribed to it on the workshop, copy to editor, and click OK. Inside the custom data, though, you will see a whole bunch of options uh, for how to manage your farm. So if you don't want to use any of the cool features that I'm going to show you with LTDs, you can put a group name in here. There's more information about that on the Steam workshop guide. But if you want to use it, you can. I don't recommend it. I think the LCD version is better. You can turn off whether or not it controls the farm plot lights. You can change the colors of the different lights that it uses. It uses these same colors for lights on the farm plot themselves, as well as lights in the uh, LCD displays. And then you can configure the thresholds for when it gives you warnings. So uh, how low should the ice get before it starts to warn you? How, sh how low should water get in the farm plots before it starts to warn you? So... What I've got here is two different sets of farm plots. They're on the same grid and everything, but maybe I want to manage them separately. Like maybe this one's going to be grain and this one is going to be fruits or something like that. I don't know. And I want to manage them separately. You could manage them all together if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. You can make as many groups as you want. So I've gone ahead and created these two groups. So I've put uh, the farm plots and the irrigation system for that group. And I've put the farm plots and the irrigation system for this group into these two groups. And then we need to do something to be able to show them. So I'm going to just put an LCD right here and we're going to do farm block one. So you're going to go up to this LCD and you're going to add a tag farm LCD. And as soon as you do that, the script will pick it up. And if you open the custom data, you will now see there is a whole bunch of options in there. So the first thing you want to do is put in your group name, which we saw is we're going to use farm one. So open up the custom data, just type farm one. Hit OK. Right away, the script is managing that group. So you can see that the the lights have already changed color. They're flashing red, or I'm sorry, flashing blue, because they have no water in them yet. I haven't turned on the irrigation system. Well, the, actually, they're on, but they have no ice in them. So we have four plots available for planting, and the water is low in all of them. Those are the alerts that we're getting. So let's go ahead and make an LCD for the second group. In fact, just so that we can see it all at once, I'm just going to put it next to this one. And we're going to add, uh, we'll call this one LCD panel one, so I could tell them apart. Farm LCD, just like that. Open up the custom data. Everything is populated. Farm two is our group. And now the script is managing farm two. It says the exact same thing because they're in the same state, but you could see from the names, farm plot one, farm plot two, there's nothing planted in them. So it's, it's empty at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is put some ice in the irrigation system. So I've got a nice little crate of stuff here for you. I'm going to grab uh, some fruit seeds and I'm going to grab some grains. And I'm going to plant a couple of each one. Let's do fruit, fruit, fruit. Now they're dying, of course, because you can see the lights have turned red and they're blinking. They are dying because there is no water yet. So let's go and grab some ice from here. Let's grab 100 ice. And just put that right into our irrigation system. And you can hear that turn on. And now, so the health of these plants is now going back up. They were dying before. Uh, but the water is filling up. Uh, let's see, water is low. Did we use up all of our ice already? We might need to. All right, perfect. Now there is plenty of ice in there. And the water levels of every single thing is going up. And we still have one farm plot available here. Because I didn't get this one on the back. Let's throw a, a grain in that one. There is a... It's showing our yield down at the bottom. So we have three plots of fruit and one plot of grain. And if this is taking up too much space, you are able to reduce the size however you like. Uh, you can also, if you prefer, 
go into the custom data of one of these and change which sections it's showing. So if I don't want to see the alerts on one of them, or if I don't want to see the farm plots, or if I don't want to see any other thing, I can just get rid of those. And this will allow you to have multiple different uh, screens that are showing you different things. You can also set a custom title. So I'm going to call this one farm number two. And you'll see at the top where it used to say farmhand, it now says farm number two. We'll do the same thing on this one. Now you may like to see your screens center. And you'll notice that they have these indentations and everything that can make centering look kind of weird. So again, custom data, go into alignment, change it to center, click OK, and now that screen will be centered. Now there's a couple of things that can go wrong here. You might notice that we have pressurized the room here. I've got this air vent going on and on the earth like you know if we open this up we could depressurize the room it's no big deal but what if what if we had some type of terrible weather like a hailstorm which does happen on certain parts of the earth-like planet well the atmosphere is pretty bad for these kinds of things so if we were to open the door now and depressurize the room immediately crops are taking damage they are dying rapidly you can see the flashing they are dead these plants have died of exposure, unfortunately. So let's close this up. We don't need this anymore. Okay, back to back to normal here. Let's deal with the fallout of this. They all died, they're dead. It's telling us that we have four dead plants that we can pick. So we're just gonna go up and use the, the new quick planting. Hang on, there we go. We'll get rid of that. You can see the lights turn back to purple. That's the default color for empty. If you want to have like UV lights as your grow lights, you could change it around so that purple is your growing color. Could do that, make black the color for when there's nothing in them so it looks like they're not on at all. You can do whatever you want. Just change the colors inside the programmable block. What if we wanted to alert that the room is depressurized? What we're gonna do is go into here and we're gonna add the air vent to our group. In fact, I'm gonna add it to both groups. And as soon as I do that, you'll see it now says atmosphere. And now we can see and we can track what the atmosphere is inside of this room. So just by adding an air vent to the room, we can track the atmosphere. So when I open that door, you know, we're on the Earth-like planet. It's not 100% pressurized on this planet. So the pressurization drops to 84%. That's not a big deal. But if we had something like a space station or Mars or something like that, where depressurization would be very, very bad, uh, you can track that here and you can see, close that, and then it goes back up. Another thing that we can track is a solar food generator. Now this is an algae farm. The game, the game calls it a solar food generator and it doesn't really give me a good way to differentiate between that and any other type of modded thing because in the game they're all solar food generators and there's no way for me to know what thing they're going to produce so i can't if there was a modded one in the game i wouldn't be able to tell it apart from a, a regular one so it's just called a solar food generator but i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to add it to farm one for now i'm going to take our half algae farm and add it in and i believe it is not turned on so let's turn it on and once it is turned on there you see solar food generators it is producing at 0.11 items per minute and the next production, meaning the next time some algae pops out of it, will be in a certain amount of minutes. This is variable based on the amount of sunlight that it's getting. And so that rate will change throughout the day. The sun's not moving in this world, so it will stabilize here. But this way you can sort of kind of tell when you're going to get some algae. All right, let's get into some of the cooler features that you can use the LCDs for. I'm going to put this, I'm just gonna put it right here. I can go here, this is gonna be LCD panel three. I'm gonna add the farm LCD tag to it. Go into the custom data, add, we'll just do farm one as our group, okay? And we get the normal text readout. Now I can go back into custom data, go to graphical mode, set this to True. Now, when you set graphical mode to true, this is going to override most of these options, such as what it's showing, because it's really just going to show you the status of the farm plots. But the title and stuff will still work, whether or not you want to see the header, that stuff will still work. So let's set that. And now we have this graphical view of our farm plots. And you can see this bottom row is the amount of water that's in the farm plot. And then this is the grow status 
of the farm plot itself. So if I was to come over here and let's say harvest one of these before it's ready and then plant some grain in it, now we'll see the grain up here as well in a separate little view and its progress has reset itself here. I like to be able to change the colors of these things so that they're a little bit easier to see. So let me do that, make it match. You can do the same thing with control seats. Let's plop down a control seat here, hop in, sit down. I'm going to look down a little bit. We're going to name this one uh, Farm LCD. All right. Go into the custom data, set this. We'll also set it to Farm 1. Okay. So now we're seeing the normal uh, screen here. Now the what you want to do with the, with these seats is anything that has more than one screen, for any of these options, you're setting the index of the screen that you want to see. So if I want to see the alerts on screen one, I could do that. This is screen zero. So now the alerts are showing up over here. They're kind of, there you go. There's no alerts at the moment. So one thing you can do here is also change the mode to graphical mode. And we're going to say that we are on screen zero for graphical mode. And there we go. So now we have the exact same readout that we have over on the other screens. The coolest thing you could do is get uh, alerts for these things. So I'm going to put down a timer block over here and I'm going to take this timer block and I am going to timer block. Let's add it to farm one timer block save. Now it's in farm one. And by the way, you can always see what it's actually tracking by looking at the screen of your programmable block. It'll list out the things that it's tracking. So I've got this timer block in here now, and it is part of the group. So if we look at the timer block, look at its custom data, we will see all the things that we can trigger on. So for a timer block, you can either trigger immediately, or if you turn this to false, then it will actually just start the countdown. So you can set the countdown to whatever you want and have it trigger later if for some reason you want to do that. What do you want this timer block to trigger on? when water is low, when the water is no longer low, uh, when a crop is dead, or when all, all of the crops have ceased dying, essentially, when, when they're all uh, back to uh, reasonable health. There's all sorts of different triggers here. You can have a trigger on more than one. Uh, any that you set to true will trigger it, but they're all going to do whatever the timer block does. So just keep that in mind. Let's take these trophy lights here and let's set them to, uh, let's set them to blink. All right. Let's set them to blink every second. And let's set the blink length to 50%, something like that. Just so that they're like doing something that we can see. Now let's go into our timer block and say that we are going to set up the actions and we're gonna take these trophy lights and we're just going to toggle them on and off just to make a simple example. So what I've done is I've cleared out all of the farm plots here so that they're completely ready to go. Now we're gonna go into our timer block, go into the custom data and we're gonna trigger this win uh, a plot is empty. And again, when there are no empty plots. So it'll switch back and forth. Now it's not going to trigger now because it'll only trigger the next time the status changes. So the next time that the, uh, that we get empty plots after this, then we will, we will get the triggering of the, the lights flashing. So I'm going to go ahead and come in the middle here and plant these plants. All right, so I think it is. Okay, so it's blinking now because now there are no more empty plots. If I were to go through and clear these all out again, which I think I'm going to have to do with the old way. Yes. Oh, wait. There we go. So we have one empty plot now, and which has triggered the timer block to shut off. So whenever different events happen, you can have multiple timer blocks. You can use the same timer block. You can have one timer block for when uh, an event happens and then another one for when its opposite happens you can use the same timer block however you want to do it. The fun thing is that this also works with broadcast controllers, meaning that you can have it uh, print a specific message to the console, uh, the the chat, whenever, you, uh, whenever a certain event happens. And it also works with action relays. If you wanted to broadcast that one of these events happened to some other grid that, and make that grid do a thing, I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Now, there is one last cool thing that you can do with this. If you thought that all of this was too complicated to set up and you just want to see what each farm plot is doing, you can grab one of these little ones. There we go. One of the ones that actually fits in the spot. Drop it right in front of a farm plot. Go into it and add a plot LCD. And as soon as you do that, without having anything in the group or anything, it'll automatically detect 
the farm plot that is behind it and it will automatically start showing you the progress and the water level without having to put it in a group without having to do anything and I, you could change the colors and do whatever you like you can also if you have one of these farm plots where there is a center row and you're like oh man do i want to put it here or do i want to put it here i don't know well guess what you could put it in the middle go into it name it plot lcd and wait a second and there you go so this one's empty this one's growing grain that's what's going on and this also works with any sort of modded you foods as well so you could take out let me let me harvest you prematurely here uh let's see we could add some potatoes from the vix mod uh by a year we could add coffee there we go coffee beans from the uh engineered coffee the mod mod and we could plant some coffee there we could plant a potato over there and there you go and now they're growing perfectly like that and if you want links to those two mods they will be down in the description there you go that's farmhand if you find any bugs please report them on the steam workshop page there are a handful more features that you could go ahead and check out read the guide and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and i hope you enjoy it you can catch me streaming on youtube several times a week i usually do space engineers but i do other games as well so feel free to stop by and say hello in the chat Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you next time.